Hello whistlers everywhere. So today what I thought I would do um, is to deconstruct um, a tune. And in this case, the tune is going to be the trip to Athlone, uh, which is a jig. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it first of all, all the way through without any ornamentation at all. Then I'm going to build up the ornamentation starting with cuts. And then I'm going to add some rolls. And then at the end, I'm going to put in what we call some crans, which is uh, a piping ornament from the Illum pipe tradition. So starting first and foremost, I'm going to play it all the way through. Uh, I'll just play it through once uh, without any ornamentation whatsoever. And this way you can get an idea of um, how the tune feels, how the tune sounds, and also the phrasing of the tune, which is really important. So here we go, the trip to Athlone without any ornamentation whatsoever. So that was the trip to Athlone without any ornamentation at all. Um, quite often it's a good idea if you get into groups with ornamentation just to play through a tune without any ornamentation. Um, just to get used to the tune, get used to how it sounds, how it flows and also the phrasing of the tune which is going to be really important as to where you decide you're going to put your ornament. Um, if you noticed I was separating the notes that were the same using tonguing and when we're adding cuts, um, it's probably best to separate using cuts, the two notes that are the same. You can use tonguing, there's no has to's, um, but it's kind of a more traditional way to separate those notes using cuts. So what I'm going to do in this next example is I'm going to separate the two notes that are the same in the tune, like two A's or two G's using cuts. I'm also going to add a number of cuts on certain notes just to give them a bit of lift and give them a bit of an emphasis which is also another use of cuts so the two kind of uses of cuts really um, without making them into short rolls or long rolls would be to separate two notes that are the same or to add an emphasis to uh, a certain note almost like an accent or yeah an emphasis would be an appropriate word
So the next version I'm going to play of the trip to Athlone, I'm now just adding some cuts, um, as you'll hear in this next example. Okay, so I'll go through slowly where I'm putting the cuts in on the piece. So the first bit. So in the second bar, I've got two A's, so I'm separating those with cuts. And again, those two A's in the third bar, separating with cuts. So next line. Two A's again separated with cuts. Now in the next bar, I'm going to cut the G. And then cut the F sharp. And so pretty much the same thing for the repeat. So on the B part, I'm going to cut the high F sharp. And the E. So. And then. So the two Ds, now you can either tongue them or cut them. Or. So the next bar, F sharp and E cut again. And so with the G, we'll leave that one for a minute because I'm gonna do something else with that. And then I'm going to cut the A. So I've got the two A's in the next bar, the G, and the F sharp again. So remembering that mostly I'm separating the notes which are the same with cuts. So, or. So now have a go at just trying to separate the notes that are the same rather than tonguing them. Try and separate them with cuts. If that's the only cut you do, that's fine. Um, but just get used to note separation with cuts rather than tonguing. Okay, so now I'm going to start adding some rolls, which is basically cuts and taps. Long rolls are note, cut, tap. So you play the note, you cut the note, you tap the note. And short rolls are just cut the note, and then tap the note. So you don't play the note first, yeah? You don't sound the note. Immediately for short rolls, you immediately cut the note and then you tap the note. So now I'm going to make some changes to this tune. So in the first bar, I've got A, B, A. And so what I'm going to do rather than playing this, I'm going to turn that into a long roll. So I'm going to go Okay, so I'm now going to put some long rolls uh, in strategic places within this tune. So here we go. So I the first three notes uh, of the first part, instead of going I did it as a long roll. And the second time when it repeated, I played it again as a long roll. 
Now, it's up to you. You can either play them as long rolls or you can play them as A, B, A. Or you can play it at different times. So you can mix and match. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so if you decide to play a long roll or you decide to play A, B, A, it's entirely up to you. Um, the ornamentation is at your discretion. So use it as much or as little as you need to, as you feel you need to. Okay, so the next section. Um, so I've got a short roll on the F sharp. And then I'm cutting the E, so it goes. What you could do, you could play the F sharp as a long roll and miss the D out. So you could go. Or. However you decide you want to shape it. So again, long roll. Or short roll going to the D. So the next bit. So there, instead of going, you could either do that or as a variation, you could do it as a long roll. You could go, or as written. Now we have a long roll on the G and I'm cutting the A above for the next phrase. So let me play all the way through now with the long rolls, short rolls and the cuts. Okay, so that was the road to Athlone or trip to Athlone, sorry, with um, cuts and long and short rolls. Now I'm going to add some crans on the lower notes and also I'm going to do cran on the upper D as well. So generally speaking, we can cran the Ds and the Es in both registers. So what is a cran? Well, cran is an illum pipe ornament, which basically you have to do a series of cuts using different fingers um, i'll so show you how to do it in slow motion but really it's a rhythmic um rhythmic ornament which doesn't really work when you do it slowly uh, it doesn't make sense until you do it at speed um, so the way i do a crown is play the note cut the note cut the note cut the note so uh, now, which finger do you cut the note first with? It, it's entirely up to you because you can use this finger, this finger, this finger, or you can use middle finger, that finger, that finger. It makes no difference. Um, it's the rhythm that we're after and the series of cuts. So it goes. Or if you want to do it the other way. So when we speed it up, that's when you start hearing the rhythm of the cran. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to do a cran slowly. It's kind of just, you've got to basically just waggle your fingers uh, in the correct rhythm. So it's kind of doing it as a as tapping on the... Diddle-a, 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 diddle-a.
Now, if you want to get really fancy, uh, and if you want, you can add an extra A cut on the end of the crown, which gives it an even more kind of um, accentuated rhythm. So you can go. And that's what I call a long cram because it's done on the note value of a dotted quarter note or a dotted crotchet. Um, short cram, you don't really have time to put that extra cut in. So a short cram would just be. A long cram. Or with the extra A cut. It takes a lot of practice to get crans and to get them smooth and to get the right rhythm. So don't worry too much about getting crans to start with. It takes a lot of practice. And my advice would be to take them slowly and work up to getting the correct rhythm. Um, just takes practice really. So now I'm going to play the trip to Athlone with the crans as well. So the other note you can cram is you can cram a high D as well. And it's the same thing, except I take my finger off and go. Long cram, short cram. Or if you want to add the extra A. Yeah, as I say, can't really do cram slowly um, because you need to get the correct rhythm. Okay, so here we go. Uh, trip to Athlone with the crans, cuts, rolls, the works, basically. It's got everything in it. I'm sure there's lots of other things that you can do with this tune. Um, you can make sort of changes to certain uh, notes. So rather than playing, um, say, like a, a stretch of these notes, like you could go. So you could put a long roll on that G. So really, it's up to you how you decide to ornament the tune. The most important thing when you are considering putting ornaments into a tune is, does it change the overall structure of the tune does it improve the tune or does it just become untidy uh, and the last thing an ornament should do is detract from the original tune so um, it's always a good idea to maybe put slightly less ornamentation in when you're first learning it and then once you get confident with ornaments then you can start adding maybe a few more uh, but how much or how little in terms of ornamentation is very much an individual player's uh, thing uh, and it's how you hear the tune yourself if you like an ornament use it if you think well it's not really doing much for me then leave it out there's no has to with ornamentation it's all about preference okay so um the last thing i'm going to talk about is a little bit about breathing uh, and again in breathing um what I have to do and what most whistle players would do is to take strategic breathing marks and, and maybe rather than playing the full tune or a full run of, of eighth notes, what you can do is you can use part of that, that run or those eighth notes to use as a breathing mark. I'll show you what I mean by that. So. and then miss out. So I've missed the D out to get a breath. So I'm going. So if that's where you need to breathe, then you can do that. Most important thing is to keep the flow of the music going. So if I play this at speed now,
Now I can quite comfortably get to that first, through that first A section. Um, and rather than playing that pickup note to get back into it, I'm using that as a breath. And that's quite useful to be able to do that. So I don't have to breathe anywhere else, but right at the very end of the first time bar. So here we go again. And then in the second time bar, I'm missing that E out as a pickup note uh, to bring us into the B part, and I'm just using it as a breath. So, and again, same with the pickup note in the first time bar. I'm just going, leaving that as a breath. Uh, a breathing space and then what I'm doing is going straight back in so and if you're running out of breath you might have to just sacrifice uh, one of the eighth notes so it's better to sacrifice one of the smaller eighth notes than sacrifice a number of notes so the idea is with the breathing is never deplete your breath so much that you have to stop um, and take a huge breath the idea is just to maybe skip over a note and use a note as a breathing um, breathing spot so there you have it <clears throat> i've started off with the uh, tune completely unornamented separating the notes that are the same by tonguing then we introduced some cuts and then we introduced some long rolls and short rolls and then at the end i talked a little bit about cranning and introduced those in the full tune so i hope you found this useful uh, and if you have i'd really appreciate it if you could uh, subscribe to my whistleblowers youtube channel uh, leave a comment and again if anybody has any re requests regarding uh, whistle technique or anything whistle related uh, Drop me a line, you can email me at ben at benwalker.org or you'll find me on Facebook or Instagram or you can email me or just leave a message um, in the comments uh, in YouTube. Okay, thanks a lot and uh, I'll see you soon for another episode of The Whistleblower. Bye for now.